Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we'll be talking everything about document signing. We'll be looking at the differences between electronic and the digital signatures, how to use the right type of signature solution and looking at the different levels and what they mean. So let's get started. So my first question is, I have read and heard a lot recently about digital and electronic signatures. Can you explain what the differences are? Absolutely. Uh, the easiest way is to start with electronic signatures. Now, electronic signature is simply uh, an electronic version of a person's agreement to a document or data. Uh, this is intended to be the equivalent of a wet ink signature. In simple terms, uh, it is an electronic version of a handwritten signature. Okay, I see. So I can scan a copy or use an image of my physical signature and that would be classed as an electronic signature. Yes, that's correct. Okay, but what about digital signatures? Are they not the same? No. So a digital signature uses encryption methods to verify the contents of the document and the size identity. Whereas an electronic signature serves evidence that the sign of the document has agreed to its contents. Okay, I'm not sure I understand the difference. Can you explain a bit more about digital signatures? Of course. So a digital signature is an enhanced level of electronic signatures which uses digital certificates known as PKI, or public key infrastructure, which legally proves the identity of a signer, which can be either an individual or a business. Whereas an electronic signature does not prove the identity. Okay, that's great to know that a digital signature uses that PKI technology and that the identity is proven, but how does that actually work? Okay, so we're getting a little bit technical now. When you apply a digital signature to a document using cryptography methods, such as TKI, as I just mentioned, it takes your digital certificate, which is used to verify your identity, to create the hash of your document. Now, a hash is simply a computer-generated algorithm, or otherwise known as a digital fingerprint. This hash is then encrypted using the Sunnis private key, Combining the hash and the private key forms a digital signature. When a document is digitally signed and sent to someone, the recipient can then use the signer's public key to decrypt the document. This confirms the content of the document and send that is who they say they are. Recipients can use this to identify the document's originality, but they don't need any additional software to access the document. So oh, I mess that was a little technical, but nicely broken down and now I won't stand in the differences of how they work. I'd like now to explore why digital signatures are important. Can you elaborate? Of course. Well, without them, it would be far too easy to dispute that the content of the document has not been altered. It also verifies a signer's identity, making them ideal for sensitive legal documents and contracts. Any changes made to assign data or a document invalidates the whole signature. And it's good to know that once a document has been digitally signed, the content can be altered. I'm aware there is more than one type of digital signature though. Can you explain what these are? Ah, uh, yeah. So actually there are two main types, uh, advanced and qualified. An advanced signature provides verification of the size identity and assurance that the document has not been tampered with, as I mentioned earlier. Whereas a qualified signature includes the characteristics of advanced, but also offers the highest level of assurance as it has to be issued by a qualified trust service provider and using a qualified signature creation device. And um, what is a qualified signature creation device? Absolutely. So a qualified signature creation device, or otherwise known as a QSCD, is a certified and approved hardware device, such as tokens, that they use to generate qualified electronic signatures. And you also mentioned qualified trust service provider. Can you explain what you mean by that too? Yeah, so a qualified trust service provider, which is also known as a QTSP, is an entity that has been granted the qualified status by a national supervisory body. That's great, thanks, I understand now. But now, where can I get these digital certificates? Well, although widely available, um, the certificates to be trusted publicly and privately, digital certificates do need to be obtained from a certificate authority, such as Global Site. Um, with an issue, track, and revoke certificates. Okay, great. I want to change the subject ever so slightly, but I believe still very much linked. And I know this sometimes can cause confusion too. I've heard the terminology about seals, 
and understand these to be something like the old-fashioned wax seal. Are these not the same as digital signatures? Yeah, so the seals of digital signatures are very similar, to be fair. Uh, the main difference is that a digital signature can be associated to both a natural person or legal person or entity, whereas a seal is only associated to a legal entity. It's ideal for bulk signing of internal documents, uh, for example, that e invoicing where the emphasis is proving the document originates from a set organization rather than an individual. And as you say, it represents that wax seal, and you know the date and time that the document was actually sealed. Oh, okay, thanks. That definitely clears things up, and no wonder people get confused. Um, but the difference is that you either apply a level of the signature appropriate to your business needs, whether it's advanced or qualified, or indeed it can be a seal. But that leads me on to asking, how would I know what solution or time of signature that I should be using? Well, before you start, uh, you do need to ascertain the regulation requirements uh, and risk associated with your particular signing needs. Um, a simple electronic signature is best used for kind of low volume signing requirements and non-regulated industries. There's no real risk, um, such as signing a receipt of a training session or an internal memo. An advanced electronic signature is an additional signature ideal for high volume signing needs and for regulated industries and requires basic identity vetting. Good examples are signing off expenses, purchase orders to a certain level, uh, or medium risk internal documents. And then we have qualified electronic signatures, which offer the highest level of security and assurance with non recutable document signing and are legally binding, conforming to the highest requirements regulations such as EIDAS and eSign. These are ideal for signing high manning purchase orders, uh, contracts, sending HR documents, update drawings, etc. Okay, I know we have a number of different solutions here at GlobalSign. Can you give me a very brief overview of what solutions we do have? Yeah, so we have the Digital Signing Service, or DSS, uh, which enables organisations to sign documents with advanced digital signatures and seals quickly, easily and securely. And then we have the Qualified Signing Service, uh, QSS, which provides a secure authentication solution for qualified signatures and seals. That's great, thank you. And earlier you mentioned EIDAS and eSign. Are there any other regulations around either electronic or digital signatures? There are, but, but let me just explain a bit more about EIDAS and eSign. So EIDAS stands for the Regulation on Electronic Identification and Trust Service. It was created by the European Commission. It helps establish trust in electronic transition of transactions between individuals, organizations, and government entities across the European member states. ESIB is the US Electronic Signatures in Global and National Commerce Act, and that's from 2000. And that legislated that electronic signatures are legal in every state and US territory where federal law applies. Well, what about other countries? Are there any other regulations that our customers need to be aware of? Well, there are. Uh, there are quite a few um, differently signed laws and customers should really check the local requirements before implementing a solution just to make sure. Well, thank you very much for all this information and I, help, and I hope this helps viewers to understand the differences between electronic signatures versus digital signatures, the levels of trust on what they can be used for. If you would like to learn more about Global Sign Different Solutions or to talk to one of our experts, don't hesitate to get in contact. Thank you.